Hey buddy, what's up? Are you in the neighborhood again? No, I'm actually home. Uh, just wanted to call you and say hi and also thank you for letting me use your Wi-Fi the other day. Oh, you're very welcome. Anytime, buddy. That's very nice of you to call. Hey, listen, a quick question. How do you make sure your home network, I mean your Wi-Fi and everything is secure? Well, uh, to answer your quick question, um, I gotta say... First off, as far as the Wi-Fi security, I would try to keep the Wi-Fi signals within my house as much as I can. Because in terms of security, it is not the best idea if the people who are not supposed to connect to my Wi-Fi actually can receive my Wi-Fi signals. It also can interfere with their Wi-Fi which is gonna be bad for both of us. But of course it's not always practical to do that. And that's why I also make sure my Wi-Fi has proper security in place. And by that I mean I choose WPA2 for authentication, AES for encryption, and a combination of uppercase lowercase letters with numbers and symbols for the pre-shared key which is the Wi-Fi password. Something that no one can guess. Not only does that prevent any unauthorized access to my Wi-Fi, but also because of the encryption between the router and clients, even if somebody is eavesdropping the wireless packets, they cannot see the actual data. That should hopefully pretty much keep my Wi-Fi secure, but if I want to go one step further, I can also use Mac filter. This way, if I select accept, only the devices that I have added to this list can connect to my Wi-Fi. Or if I select reject, everybody can connect except the ones that are listed here. I personally don't use this Mac filter. I think it's a little bit too much for me. I just make sure the authentication, encryption and password are secure. And if some guests are coming over, then I create a guest network for them. This way they don't have to mess with my own network. Wait a second. Does that mean when I came to your house, you actually created a guest network for me? Uh, yes, but yours was a VIP guest network. I mean, it was 5 gigahertz, no upload, download, speed limits, and um, it came with 24-7 uh, support. Oh, I see. So far we talked about the Wi-Fi security, but I also want to make sure the router itself is secure. And that's why I always change the router's default username and password to something else. It is usually by default admin admin or admin with no password. Another thing that I do is to make sure nobody from outside, I mean from internet, can access either my router or my LAN. Because the router has a public IP address which makes it accessible from anywhere on the internet, basically somebody can easily open a browser, type in my public IP address and see my router's web interface. And just imagine if I forget to change the default username and password, pretty much everybody can log into my router from anywhere in the world. That's not cool, that's why I've already changed the default username and password, but I'm also gonna make sure web access from WAN is disabled. This way the router doesn't even let people from internet see this login page. Sometimes I've done all of that but there is a vulnerability in the router's firmware that allows the hackers to access the router or my LAN. So that's why I always make sure the latest version of firmware is actually installed on my router. Because they usually fix these security issues in a newer version of the firmware. And last but not least, I'll try to use any security features that is available in my wireless router. For example, I'll make sure the firewall is always enabled. As you can see, my ASUS wireless router give me an option to enable protection against DOS attacks, which I'm gonna use. I can also disable the ping requests from internet, which again I'm gonna use. Now, my ASUS wireless router has another security feature called AI protection, which is actually one step above the firewall. First off, it is powered by Trend Micro, and as it says here, it provides real-time network monitoring to detect malware, viruses, intrusions before they can reach the PC or device. I'm gonna skip this number one here for now, but I'll get back to it later. 
As you can see with this AI protection, I can actually enable malicious site blocking, which basically restricts access to any known malicious website. It also has a two-way IPS or intrusion prevention system. Basically, this is a protection against hackers. It performs in-depth scans of inbound and outbound internet data to block all common attacks. There is also infected device prevention and blocking. Basically, if an already infected device connects to the router, it will prevent the personal data on the device from being compromised by detecting and blocking the device's connection with the malicious server. Now let's go back to the number one. This is also a very handy feature. Basically, it will scan the router for any vulnerabilities and makes it much easier to fix them. I've already talked about some of these, but there are some here that I haven't talked about. For example, DMZ, Port Trigger, or Port Forwarding. These are some services that if used correctly, should not necessarily be considered as security risks. For example, let's say I have a web server and I use port forwarding on my router to forward HTTP traffic to my server. This way there is an open port on the router which people from outside can use this port to pass the router and reach the server. This might sound like a security problem in the beginning, but if the server is secured, I mean it has firewall, antivirus and everything, and the operating system is also up to date, then it should be fine. But if I remove this server and forget to disable the port forwarding rule, it is possible that after some time I connect another device to the network which happened to have the same IP address as the previous server. Now if this device is not secured enough, with this port forwarding rule we're gonna have a problem. And that's why this security assessment can help me to know what is going on on my wireless router. Maybe there is a service that is going to make my network more secure and I forgot to enable it, such as malicious website blocking. Or maybe there is a potentially dangerous service enabled and I forgot to disable it, such as port forwarding. Okay, so basically that's how I make sure my home network is secure and I hope it was helpful for you. Yeah, that was helpful for sure, but you know how it's going to be even more helpful um, if maybe in 10-15 minutes I come to your house and bring my wireless router with me. This way you get to practice what you just told me on my wireless router too. Everybody wins. How about that? See ya.